Let's talk about the first signs that your YouTube channel might be failing. Low subscriber counts, no viral videos, dislikes, negative comments on your videos, or the feeling that the YouTube algorithm just isn't treating you fairly. If any of these sound like you, let us know in the comments below which one you worry about the most. Because I'm here to tell you that not a single one of these has anything to do with a failing channel. But this does. All right, all right, maybe you don't believe me yet. I get the skepticism. So let's break down these failing thoughts so that we can rebuild your confidence and determination to succeed. But before we do, I have one more very simple question. Do you enjoy being a YouTuber, a content creator, whatever you wanna call it? Are you motivated to spend time, well, a lot of time, a lot of your spare time not getting paid to do this? Do you like making videos? We all share the same answer to that question, right? Good, let's get cracking. Having a low subscriber count on your channel after a few months on YouTube is not necessarily a sign of failure. After all, it takes time to build an audience on YouTube and everybody grows at different rates. Not to mention the countless channels that are getting way more views than subscribers, which is typically a great sign. It means that YouTube is constantly testing the content with bigger and bigger audiences and the subscriber count simply can't keep up with that. Now, it seems crazy that we still have to convince creators of this fact, but subscribe Subscriber accounts are much more a vanity metric and a means to unlock monetization than they are a reliable indicator of an actual audience size of a channel. And it has been a few years since I've touched on this subject, but here's the easiest example to explain what I mean. Take Mr. Beast and T-Series when it comes to subscriber counts, the two largest channels on YouTube. But take a look at their view counts from video to video. One is very high and consistent and the other is all over the place. Now, of course, neither of these channels could be described as a failure but the subscriber counts on those channels bear a little relation to the view counts on the videos. As clearly demonstrated in the biggest example of them all, different audiences react very differently to different types of channels. And as a result, the subscriber count of any channel is a very unreliable way to judge success. Return viewers, which is a number you can find in your own YouTube studio, is always going to be the number I'll point you towards. It accurately reflects the health of your channel right now, in particular, your core community. Those people who are coming back to your content on a regular basis. And if that's growing, your channel is succeeding. What returning viewers typically want is consistency. I know, I know, some of you hate it when we consistently bring up this important YouTube step, but it is an absolute fundamental. It builds the know, like, and trust factor of your channel. And it does so to the point where loyal viewers don't really pay attention to the thumbnail and the title of their favorite creator. They're just going to watch the video because it's from their favorite creator. As for not going viral being seen as a sign of failure, be very careful what you wish for. Obviously, by their very nature, they are rare and often set unrealistic future expectations. And often, they force you into a niche or a topic that you just don't much care for. In actual fact, going viral can actually set you up for future failure. What creators tend to discover is that when they go viral, nothing that follows matches that viral success. As a result, all of their channel numbers fall down a metric mountain over the following weeks and months. And that can be a really mentally tough challenge to understand and overcome. Incremental improvement is a far more sustainable way to grow a YouTube channel. And I think this graph I found on Wano's Twix feed when we recently interviewed him is the perfect way of visualizing the dangers of going viral. What you're much more likely to encounter on your channel are what I call viral moments. This is where one of your videos isn't just a one of 10, but it's 300, 400, 500% more views than usual. Now that might only be a thousand views, 10,000 views, a hundred thousand views, but it matters a lot to you, right? And that is the type of moment that you can feel proud of and celebrate, and most importantly, capitalize on because it was likely achieved through consistency and can be replicated. Really, in all honesty, I would say 99% of creators should avoid going viral. And you'll find out why really soon. And now it's time for a fun fact. Over its lifetime, the vidIQ channel has received more than 200,000 dislikes. And so what we're basically saying here is that the entire population of Des Moines, Iowa dislike me. And I'm cool with that because I never had any plans to visit there. There's gonna be one person in the comments who's gonna take real offense to that, isn't there? In truth though, I am happy about dislikes. 
because it means that our content engages the audience enough to care. And on the flip side, you are always going to have more likes than dislikes. And we've got four and a half million of them. As a creator, you have to accept that you won't please everybody, nor should you try to. In fact, it can be a good thing to have haters or non-believers. If people know what you are not, then they have a better understanding of what you are. Think Apple. You definitely know who they are as a company and who they don't appeal to. And Apple make no apologies for that. And you can apply this to literally any sports team on the planet. There will always be more non-believers, haters and trolls than there are die-hard fans. But this hasn't stopped Real Madrid, the New York Yankees, or the Dallas Cowboys from becoming globally recognized entities. If your videos were getting no likes, no dislikes, no comments, I'd be much more worried because that means your videos aren't doing enough to make people care. In your own little way, celebrate those dislikes. Just don't overthink them and put all of your efforts into likes and positive comments. But if you think all of this is nonsense, I highly recommend you read a book called Primal Branding. It's the reason I wear these glasses now and how they become so iconic on the channel, even though I think they look a bit silly on me. Now, as for the algorithm having a vendetta against your channel because it's too small for YouTube to care, a complete and total myth. Over the years, we've done several case studies that prove this to be wrong. That includes a gaming channel that covers nostalgic 1990s space simulators that got over 100,000 views on its very first video. We interviewed a travel couple that quit their channel so that they could start a new one and redefine their target audience. They didn't advertise this new channel to their old audience. It was a fresh start and it only took five days and two videos for that channel to take off. Look, I don't want to dive deep into the algorithm in this video. Regular viewers, or should I call you return viewers? Hell, some of you might even be subscribers. Should be well versed by now in the YouTube algorithm since we've dissected it over the years. The two main takeaways of a YouTube algorithm are this. Number one, replace the word algorithm with audience. Focus on that. And number two, YouTube doesn't push creators' videos to viewers. It's the complete opposite, in fact. Viewers pull in videos through their own personalization, taste, and watching habits. Because here's the thing, you can control your audience, how you target them, how you communicate with them, how you engage with them. But you can't do anything to control the black box that is the YouTube algorithm. And besides, YouTube themselves don't even call it an algorithm. They label it as their search and discovery systems. But if all of this has nothing to do with a failing channel, then what's the problem? Put simply, it's you. If your subscriber count is causing anxiety and you're frustrated that you haven't had a viral video yet, then you're just gonna feel like YouTube's really hard. And then it becomes a drag and it just feels like a chore. If dislikes and negative comments begin to erode your confidence, then your passion is gonna start to waver. And if you let the YouTube algorithm control your feelings, then you'll start to believe that there is no solution to the impossible. When you start to think and then feel that you're failing at YouTube, I'm afraid it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When it comes to the feeling of failure on YouTube, I always try to look at it from this point of view. And no matter how small your channel is, how many struggles you're facing, or how many challenges you think are impossible right now, every single successful creator on the YouTube platform has gone through this many times over and more intensely. Because that feeling of failure never truly goes away. In fact, it grows as your audience does because you have a greater sense of responsibility. Remember, Mr. Beast started at zero views and zero subscribers, and he's definitely failed at YouTube more times than you. He just kept going and figured it out. So it all goes back to that very simple question. Do you enjoy making videos? If the answer is yes, then that is a passion that will make sure you never fail. And as for that incredibly niche gaming channel that got over 100,000 views on their first video, proving all of the algorithm haters wrong, this is where you'll find the case study.